A great way of sharing your data with your clients is by means of a fly through video. Anyone can double click and open it up and have a look. So let's see how to do that within Agisoft MetaShow. At this point, I'm assuming you already have your data processed, you have a dense cloud and perhaps a 3D model as well. In this case, I'm using a data set that is from Switzerland. It's a really pretty little town up on a hill. Obviously, it's got some history. We can see a, a really cool castle there in the background. And this data lends itself very well to creating attractive fly-through videos. In order to do this in Metashape, go to View and activate the Animation panel. You'll see that will appear on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. And it's using this Animation panel that we will define the flight path that we want to view and produce. Metashape has two different flight paths automatically built in. So if you click create, the first option is to create a horizontal flight path. And if you say OK and zoom out, you will actually be able to see the position of all these different cameras now for this horizontal fly through. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see the 40 elements or the 40 keyframes that it has created. If you go to any of these keyframes, double click on them, you'll be able to see now what the video would be viewing at that point in time. So if you don't like any of these viewing positions or you want to edit them ever so slightly, you can shift it around and then update that view. But let's leave those alone for the moment. And we're going to go back to the first keyframe and we're going to start the video to see what it looks like. So now the video will begin to play and it's following that very flat circular path that we saw. And it's not too bad, but let's be honest, it's not exciting either. This, this isn't a thoroughly impressive video, but it's a simple one and it would work if that's what you chose. So let's get rid of these keyframes and we're going to try the vertical option to see what the difference is between the two. So select the frames and delete them. Go back to create track and change the preset from horizontal to vertical. And we'll leave the keyframe count alone we'll, as the same 40 as we had earlier on. And we say, okay. Now zoom out and take a look at the difference. And what you're going to see is this linear feature at the top, just a straight line of camera frames. And we can see them all pointing down towards the data. So we know this is just going to be a straight line over our data set. Again, you know, it's not too bad, but it's not the best fly through video you've ever seen either. Fortunately for us, there is a third option. So let's get rid of those keyframes. And what we are going to focus on is creating a manual flight path. To do this, you are going to have to identify each keyframe within your video. And a keyframe is, let's call it a point of interest or an ideal view where you want the video to focus on at some point along the entire video. So in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by having a look at, at the center of town, focusing perhaps on that castle tower that's there in the middle. And once you're happy with your position, on the animation tab, you hit the plus button for append, and it will now add a new keyframe. So we see our first keyframe has been loaded. You then, do whatever you would like to find your second view. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Perhaps, perhaps I should go down, maybe a little bit up. I'm, I'm going to go down and then follow a, a kind of a circular pattern and then change elevation later on. So what you want to do now is move around the data. And as you get to a key area, hit append each time and it will add a frame to each of those key regions that you are focusing on. So just go through your entire data set, depending on the size of the job, selecting the, the viewpoints that you want your video to have. And once we've got them all, we can go back to the beginning and we can have a look at what our fly path looks like. Okay, so it's, it's definitely following the path we specified, but honestly, it feels like a bouncing ball just going from point to point to point to point. And that's not something you want to watch for too long. It, it's really not that pleasing to the eye. Fortunately, Metashape has a setting that we can set. So open up your animation settings, 
Oh, first thing, obviously, you know, it, it's got the, the name from our previous run. So I'm just going to change vertical to manual, but honestly, that doesn't matter. And you'll see options here for duration and field of view. We'll come back to these later on, but focus here on smooth camera track. Turn that checkbox on and now play the video again and notice the improvement in the path that this video takes. So it's going to start at the exact same point, but look how much smoother it is now. So it's still hitting each of those keyframes that we had defined earlier on. But the transition from one to the next is beautifully smooth. So Metashape is just interpolating the path of what it should be from one frame to the next frame and smoothing it out so that it becomes this nice attractive path that doesn't make you feel like you're bouncing around. And that's really it. It's as simple as that. So you, you set the keyframes. You then, usually you would want to turn on that smooth camera track unless you've put in many of your own keyframes. It really helps. So again, this is on the 3D model, but what's really cool is that you could do the exact same thing with the point cloud. So I've just switched to my point cloud now and I'm hitting play again for preview. And now we see the exact same camera path moving through the point cloud. And what you could do is actually merge the two, not, not within Metashape, unfortunately, but you can produce the video from the 3D model and then produce the media model of the point cloud and merge them. Here, what I'm doing is turning on some vector layers. So I have some road layers that I have added into my project and I've purposefully set them a little bit high above the terrain. So there's an offset from the true terrain just to further enhance that um, 3D visualization here. And you could save this video as well. So you can use vector lines, you can use shapes, you could input text, arrows, really anything you want. And you can change the style, the color of any of those features as well. So there are many, many options. And in fact, you might want to blend many of these options together. And that's what we'll do in the final video. So hold on to the end and make sure you watch the video to see what we've achieved there. Okay, but I think it's a good idea to start with the tiled model. So let's return to the tiled model and get ready to actually save this video. However, the first thing I want to point out is that on the screen, we still have our trackball in the middle and we've got the camera frames all around. And if we record the video, those will be saved into the video. So we want to get rid of them. Go to model, show hide items. And here you, you can see that you can turn on or off any of their features for the view. So I'm going to disable the animation path and the cameras, and I'm also going to disable the trackball. So that all rem that remains on the screen now is the model that we want to have in our fly through video. So depending on the region you're working on, you might choose to change the background color. In order to do that, you go to tools and then select preferences. And once that window opens up, you want to go to your appearance tab. And the first option there is background color. So you can select it and then play around, test a few colors, see what works for you really. In this case, I'm going for a pretty neutral, not too exciting, but a neutral gray, because really we want to focus on the town, focus on the model here. So we don't want the background distracting from it. So the last thing we want to point out is Metashape will export the video based on the screen real estate available. So in this case, although the model dominates the screen, it isn't the entire screen. So we're going to maximize the viewing area. So I'm going to get rid of the toolbar. I'm going to minimize the animation page as much as, as, much as possible. Uh, but we still need that animation pane just so that we can start the recording, but we make it as small as possible and we maximize our screen real estate this way. Let's have one final look at the settings. So what I want to point out here is the field of view. Currently, the screen is set to about that 30 degree field of view. And if you save the video, it'll be very much what you see on the screen. 45 or 60, as we move up beyond the 30 degrees, will be a wider field of view. And therefore, it will almost appear as if you're zooming out from what you see on screen. So if you want to replicate what you have on screen, leave it at 30 and saturation to whatever you want. I have run this up to 35 minutes long, 
So it seems you can save a really long video. We then say capture, define a name. I'm just overwriting an old one. And we say save. It then will recommend a resolution based on the screen. So I'm really close to my 1920 by 1080, which is what I want. And I'm going to increase my frame rate to 60 frames a second. And you say OK, and it will start to save the video in AVI format. There are no other options, but once you've got that AVI, you can use a third party tool to convert it. And once it's finished and done with a little bit of tweaking, this is the result that we have achieved with that flight path. So what I've done in this video is a merge of the model and the point cloud viewed with different attributes. So classes and point confidence and the point colors themselves. And you'll see right at the end, I've actually added in those vector layers as well. So using a video editor, you can also highlight certain features that might be points of interest as an example, like we're doing over here. And that's it. Nice and simple. Why don't you give it a go with some of your own data?